All right, what's up everyone? So my mic's been broken for a while. That's why I haven't been making any videos lately, but I figured I'd make one anyway. Might be a big week this week, so even if it's bad audio, I want you to be prepared. Um, so first off, let's start with GME. Um, okay, where should we start? Um, okay, let's start on the monthly level, on the highest time frame. So whenever you have a velocity print that just dwarfs the previous velocity print, so we call that a capitulation print. And a capitulation print means that instead of walking price down, it means that whichever side the velocity print is on, which is this one's negative, it means that the sellers decided to push it all down in one shot, but that's the end. You know, that's the end of their move. So, you know, previously we could see on the weekly velocity how it was, you know, walking down, walking down, walking down. Each week, Nemo was predicting the price would go lower because each week velocity became more and more negative. But on the monthly level, we could see that this last push down was just, you know, the last push before the reversal. So that was a tell on the monthly velocity based on how extremely negative it was. Now on the weekly velocity, we saw this uh, walk down for, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six consecutive weeks. And then on this reversal, GME was able to cut the negative weekly velocity almost in half. So that's a positive sign going into next week. Look at the daily level. So, you know, GME has been under this daily trigger, broke under at 26.35. And remember, the daily trigger is a very strong acceleration level. So when price breaks through one way or another, usually that side capitulates. And so when it broke down here, it usually means that, you know, the bulls will capitulate and bears will have control for a little bit, which is exactly what we saw. So we dropped from 26 down to low about 1562 um, before we made the reversal. Now, there was no tells in the daily velocity that GME would make this reversal. But on the hourly, you know, you could see how on this drop, the hourly velocity was 0.16. And then GME made one new low. So there's your bullish hourly divergence. And then your second new low, second bullish hourly divergence. And your third new low with bullish hourly divergence. Because this low, this low, and this low, hourly velocity did not make a new low. Um, then GME was able to break above the hourly trigger. That actually happened right here. And once GME broke above the hourly trigger, we had a really strong, nice, powerful move up here. Uh, here's where we bought calls-ish, and we wrote it up here for a nice 150% gain. And then on Thursday, GME actually broke above the daily trigger. So th this part is very important. If GME can remain above the daily trigger, which is 20.01, long enough for the hourly trigger to cross above the daily trigger. The hourly trigger is right now in 1932. So you're talking about seven, six, seven, eight hours. The hourly trigger will move up about 10 cents each hour. So once the hourly trigger crosses the daily trigger, what you'll normally see is a counter trend move back down to the hourly trigger or the daily trigger, and then a strong push up to fill this air pocket all the way to the weekly trigger at 2586. Now, although it seems like a really big move, I've posted screenshots and I've shown in videos before, this tends to almost always happen. It's not a guarantee, but it's 90% of the time if GME can just remain above the daily trigger long enough for the hourly trigger to cross, you'll have a move up to the weekly trigger. So for GME uh, side of things, things are looking very good. Um, obviously we had the weekly trigger crossing the monthly trigger here. This is a very bearish occurrence in any stock. So I'll highlight that for you right here is where the weekly trigger crossed down. And uh, that's what told us in advance that this horrific move to the downside was coming. We also had a chance to squeeze or at least make a really nice melt up to the upside right here um, and again right here. But both these times, GME couldn't break above the weekly and the monthly trigger at once. If GME could have broken up above the weekly trigger and the monthly trigger at once, that, that because each trigger is an acceleration level and breaking through two of them at once and the most powerful ones at once, uh, leads to extreme moves to the upside. That's when I believe Jamie would have squeezed. But you know, as long as Jamie could make a move above twenty eight eighty one, I think we'll get there anyway. Now, uh, moving on to deep dive stocks. This is actually something that I've recently uh, started using. This is not a promo for them at all, but I found the data helpful. So VOX, which is this uh, pink line, uh, when it moves into the stability zone. That's a bullish finding, and you can see once it moved in the stability zone, Jimmy started moving up. Now, one thing that is a little bit alarming is that 
Uh, from the gamma heat map, it shows a large amount of selling pressure above, nothing too crazy uh, from 20 to 25, which is you know where I think we could get to anyway. I don't think uh, GME is ready to break above this weekly trigger just yet. Uh, so we'll see how the week takes us. Uh, not much supporting a big move up currently. Um, and the snap graphs works very simple. When the black line is above the gold line, it's bullish. When the black line is above the gold line, it's bearish. Now, last week, all four of these lines were above the line. So I think if I pull up the Discord where I posted it um, in the GME channel. So yeah, you can see how all four black line was above the gold line. And you know we said that was gonna be bullish here as well. And GME actually had a really nice week here as well. So almost every day here as well. So almost every day last week, uh, the snap graphs were bullish and GME performed very bullishly as well. Uh, moving on to BBBY. So, you know, this is um, the whole time we said any move above 262, which is the daily trigger is gonna lead to the squeeze. Uh, we posted that here. Um, so we said anything above 261 for BBBY is very squeezy. Um, the daily triggers at 261 to break above that and the squeeze is on. Sure enough, BBBY broke above the daily trigger at 262. And this was Wednesday. Uh, and by Thursday, one day later, GME reached a high of, uh, BBBY, sorry, reached a high of about 580, which was the weekly trigger. And if you'll notice, I'll zoom out so you can see it, the weekly velocity was really negative. And so when weekly velocity is negative, uh, you know price is not going to be able to break above the weekly trigger. The more negative the weekly velocity is, the more control bears have at this weekly trigger. And that's why uh, we had this strong rejection at the weekly trigger at about 580. Now, the hour, the Nimoy only counts the hourly print, which the hourly closed at 524. But uh, BBBY did have an intraday high above 580. Now, another thing is that once the hourly trigger crosses the daily trigger, price tends to have a snapback move either to the hourly trigger or to the daily trigger. So, you know, if BBBY comes down to 287, that's a really strong buy because daily velocity is positive, which means that bulls have control of this daily trigger, which means that if price comes down to the daily trigger, it will get bought up very fast and very possible, or maybe even likely, make a push back up to this weekly trigger. But BBBY was absolutely textbook anemoy. The squeeze started above 262, and everyone knew to sell at 570 because price was going against the weekly trigger with negative weekly velocity. So that was a very simple play. Uh, moving on to, uh, okay, and the BBBY VOX. So VOX made a really nice move up and price followed shortly after. So that was a tell. Once VOX moves into this area above this black line, that's when you know you have to watch out for reversal, which is what happened here and happened here again. Um, BBBY doesn't, uh, it looks like it is in buying support, so there should be buy pressure around here. And we know we have uh, 68 million shares that need to be bought for GME. Um, don't think it had it for GME. Yeah, but for AMC, it was, for AMC, it's actually you know negative. Shares need to be sold. So BBBY snap graphs still look bullish, uh, so you know. Uh, BBBY, my most likely scenario is that it'll come, it'll probably come down to the daily trigger or near the daily trigger. And as long as price remains above this daily trigger, it's a strong buy back up to the weekly trigger. Now BBBY was able to do significant damage to the negative weekly velocity. So this bar that you see is not as negative as it was when price was uh, down here in the 170s. So we have a much better looking weekly print for next week, which means that if price attacks 570 again, it might blow by. And if it does blow by, uh, you have a huge air pocket up to 1312. You might think that's crazy. That's price doubling. But look what happened here when price broke above the weekly trigger. It was at um, 1117 and, you know, price doubled. So nothing's, anything can happen in the financial markets. Uh, so keep an eye out. If BBBY does move above five, 570, it can make the same exact explosive move because the weekly trigger is an acceleration level straight up towards this monthly trigger. So this is this could be a very profitable move to catch. Um, going on to AMC. Uh, AMC did break above its daily trigger towards the end of the day, but just barely. Uh, now, 
uh, very interestingly here, uh, you could see, you know, clear three uh, bullish divergences as AMC was making these, you know, new lows drifting sideways. The daily velocity was getting better and better and better, telling us bulls are secretly taking control before we can see it in the price. So this was very great for taking calls right about the bottom uh, when price broke above the hourly trigger, which we did, um, and rode them to the daily trigger and sold at the daily trigger. Uh, this was also a very profitable play. Um, now, AMC is above, but the velocity is barely anything right now. Nothing to get excited about. But again, same thing like GME. If AMC can stay above 497 for long enough for the hourly trigger at 475 to come up and cross it, then the most likely scenario is that price will rise and attack this weekly trigger at 676. Now, uh, for here, so VOX came back down into the propagation zone, which is below this black line, which is not a bullish finding. So not all the data supports a move up for AMC, but it does look like if AMC can just get above this 520 area, it can move into really strong buying support that can lead to a gamma squeeze upwards, uh, at least to the weekly trigger. Snap graphs, nothing's bullish for AMC, but that could change on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's all I have for you now. Uh, hope you enjoyed, um, and I'll give an update uh, either when my mic gets fixed or if there's something important to update. Good luck, everyone.